everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and tonight I am going to guide you step by step through painting this gorgeous fall scene. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to help me right now by getting rid of the echo oh, yeah, that I can barely talk over. <laughs> and there's your clue that this is indeed a live stream. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on, but I think you're going to really love tonight's class. Uh, the colors are going to be fun. The outcome is going to be fun. I'm going to explain every step, every material, every brush stroke. I'm going to paint a thing. You're going to paint a thing. And at the end, together, we're going to have a watercolor that we both love. We've done something kind of in keeping with this before. So if you kind of know, like, what do you to, to expect? Like, where do you expect this to come out? It's going to be, like, right in this range. If you love this one, you may want to go back to this watercolor painting and do it from before. I've got my Sennelier paints out. I also have some core and some Daniel Smith. So as we're going, uh, if those colors feel like they're calling to me, I have them. And this is also going to give me a chance to show you how half pans and tubes. Because I keep getting asked, how do you squeeze paint out of the watercolor tube? Because it's so different than the acrylic tube. Because tubes. Because tubes. So the first thing I've got to show you, and I'm pretty excited about this. This is the Minta uh, Oval Mop by Royal and Lang Nickel. I'm going to go ahead and pre-wet my paper. I'm painting on Fabriano 140 pound watercolor paper and it's in a block. I like blocks because they don't wrinkle as much. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pre-wet my paper. When you're pre-wetting your paper, you'll wanna see some sheen on the paper, but you don't wanna see a lake. Like, you don't want to feel like if a frog were coming by, the frog would say, yep, that's what I've been looking for this whole, whole, kinda, whole time. Kind of see that reflection a little bit in the you, other camera. Yeah, you've got to be able to see the reflection, but it shouldn't be uh, really holding water. It's just about kind of prepping the paper. Now, I'm going to put out one of my favorite colors. This is just, I think, one of the best, best colors ever. And I just want to show you how uh, two paints get squeezed out. I'm going to put squeeze just so gently, just so gently. It's, you know what? There's so some, gently. There's some technical trouble over on the YouTube end. Mm. And it's the video's not coming through here. Mm. So we're not exactly sure what's going on over there. I'm going to check. But it, let me give me just a moment to check something on my. Oh, no. Do we need to start over? No, no. We're just going to check something here. Um. So definitely uh circle. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see. So if you're it. over on YouTube, I uh, hope you know to come to Facebook cuz uh, we're here. Mm -hmm. Now, this here, this little plop of paint will definitely go through the entire painting and will probably last into another painting. So that would be an ample. I would consider that an ample amount of watercolor squeezed out of the tube. Mm -hmm. To give you guys like Kind of a reference and experience on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush. I'm going to wet it and kind of swirl it around. There we go. And then I'm going to come here in this distant area where I have pre-wet and kind of add just a just a little bit of a glow. We'll be building so much on this painting that this initial glow is going to be really terrific. Ah, this seems to be, Laura says, hey, this seems to be a YouTube problem. None of the channels uh, she tried are playing right now. Uh-oh. Well, so, we'll just upload later. We can't. So if our moderators will let everyone know over on YouTube that YouTube is having some difficulty, we're going to upload uh, just a little bit later. Now I'm going to grab a little of my ultramarine. I might actually do it off the pan. This is the part of it on the pan. And you get it a little bit wet so that I can have it down here. And we're going to do such a light. This will almost register as a gray in our sky, in our background. Now, our trees are coming at this really fabulous angle here across our paper. And then these come forward a little bit more in. And that's how you get the perspective of our little tree walk. And you do want a little bit of blue. It's, it should be mild, though. It shouldn't be overwhelming peeking out at the trees. I can come in with some of this underneath, which will become kind of a green gold in the distance, saying, oh, well, you're walking in the distance. There's a little green gold. So 
that's that first little light wash that goes on. And interestingly enough, because we're kind of implying that it's very bright coming down the walk, I'll add a little bit of this coming down the walk. Isn't that, that's how you get that little feel coming down. It's all about a very light color. It should be like you kissed it, you know, uh, like you just barely gave it a kiss, barely gave it a thought, you know, uh, worked it out. So we were worried that there were some trouble things going on with YouTube, guys. So we have made plans for the week if it continues. Mm -hmm. So your um, your content will keep coming to you no matter what. Even if we have any difficulty with the live, the videos that you're planning on seeing will be showing up for you. We got magic. Did you get it? Cinnamon had, well, no, you got magic. You like do all the stuff and then... I record the stuff, and then all of a sudden the stuff makes it up magic. My, my mom had mentioned that there were a lot of problems going on. So we uh -huh. had a little bit of a heads up going into this, and we're making plans. Um, for all of you guys that are directing people in the live chat to Facebook, thank you so much. So if you guys can see, it's a pre-wet. And if you are like, this color is amazing, this is Coors Nickel Ozo Yellow. I check, like at Michael's. Um, they have this in the Grumbacher watercolor and they have it in the Daniel Smith watercolor over there. So you can find it. I also looked on their artist loft, that big palette, and they have a bright luminous yellow that would work for this as well. The, I did check into that because I was like, I wanted to make sure you guys had what you needed. Now I'm going to grab a number eight round. This is a black velvet round. I'm going to tell you what you need to know about watercolor brushes. In a watercolor brush, you want it to be able to pull in a nice amount of water and have a good tip, especially on your rounds, that can go very fine. You want the brush to carry you for a little while. It can be synthetic and can be natural, but a thirsty belly is our goal. Let's get a little of our deep green here. I'm going to pull this out. And let's kind of imply with little lines that will fuzz out in the wet paper distant things that our gentleman and his sweet dog are walking to you know what i have to say the most challenging thing in the world to focus on is what that little blur that happens <laughs> when your watercolor touches it and goes whoosh, i might get like, some warm sepia which is a lot like burn umber put a little bit of that through there it's true though isn't it it's like to get it focused on that it's it's something it, it it is its own little journey now coming down i'm going to kind of help myself with my little tree row so in the trees whenever you're painting a tree row rows of lamps any of those kinds of things anything that begins rue de boulevard any of that what about boats well, i suppose if they were lined up down a canal this would also apply probably more to the trees on either side of the boats if you're painting the canal do me deep so what will happen is the trees that are closest to you will be more focal. They'll be larger. There'll be bigger spaces between the trees. And then as they get farther away, they're going to get smaller and closer together. And so we want to pay attention to that a bit as we're painting. I'm getting some more warm sepia. And one way I can do that is I can look at, you know, the direction of the trees and give myself a little, a little, oh, hey, here's some thoughts. These hues over there. Got a little distant one. I'm going to kind of imply here. He's kind of far away. Got a little bit of one going here. And again, I'm being very light and delicate about this because what I am not heavy handed about, I can change my mind about later. And it's always nice to be able to change your mind in a painting. Trying to space them out. So you'll notice that I am letting them have bigger spaces as they come towards me. And that's how mm. we're going to create that little bit of, of illusion of distance. And we'll add some implied trunk right there. It's a very light brush stroke. And all the magic of this is about the paper being wet. When you're new to watercolor, what you'll find mentally challenging uh, is the idea that some of this isn't in your control. What I want to suggest to you is that in watercolor, there's this moment where you let go 
and you allow the paper and the paint to do their thing. And then when they're done, it's just stunning. And you go, where did that painting come from? It reminds me very much of photography when I was in the dark room developing photos because you would be looking and it would be not what you wanted, not what you wanted. And then all of a sudden, the values would come in and the image would come into clarity. But there was a long period of holding your breath, just hoping that all that work paid off. Watercolor has a little bit of that to it. When you get used to it, though, it's rather lovely. We know we've got a little one there, and then he's got a little friend. There's a nice big space before the next one. Another nice big space, and oh. then a pretty big space there. So there's our road, our oh, distant okay. little road. I was typing. You You're were, typing? I was typing while you were going. I'm going to pull out a little of my nickel ozzle, and I'm going to come over to my French vermilion. I have Sennelier orange. I have French vermilion. I have a quinacridone red. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head the other color. It's in the list of colors. <laughs> I always end up being like, what's that one again? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember okay. that one. Uh, not alizarin crimson. Yep. The alizarin crimson is down here. Yeah. Quinacridone red. Uh, vermilion, San LA red, and this one is da, 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 da. oh carmine. Got it. See, it always gets me because it's a weird. So in my acrylic, uh, we don't really have a carmine. Um, bug bottoms are not big for uh, I guess acrylic polymer. Hmm. They don't give you a lot of them. <laughs> I'm just adding these little dots. So this is about creating a little bit of, of spacing, a little bit of distant soft use leaves right if you've got light here you can see that you do this is going to lighten quite a lot as you paint so try not to react too strongly to the color because you're going to find that as you go i'm going to add a little more of my nickel ozo into this that it's going to continue to lighten and it's going to continue to lighten and blend and soften into the paper and then all of a sudden you're going to be like where did that Look at that gorgeous set of leaves come from. They just, they just found their moment. And the leaves are going to be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's wonderful to put there. I'm going to get uh, a bit of my warm sepia into this. It's fun to put brown into your fall composition, even in your leaves. And the reason is, is that, you know, we do have those, those little moments, I'm going to get some burnt sienna going here, where the brown starts to come in and capture some of what's going on in our fall scape. Now, this wrinkled so much, it started to pull free of the block mm. right there. As it dries, wait, 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 as it dries, uh -huh. block because all the sides are glued. They will continue to stretch it back down and flatten back out. This one was, uh, it really had a little moment in its life, but as long as you allow it to dry on the block overnight, you'll find that they're quite flat that next day. Oh, I lost my pyrrole red. I have it in the back just in case uh, it gets real up in here. And again, we're just wanting to make sure that we have little breaks, little, little weird spots in the opening. It's also nice to get the green into some orange. And that is really because they make each other their complements and they create a really lovely set of browns that will create some synergy in your piece. Let's start to pull some road in, right? A little bit of road. Let's get distant road. Distant road is not as, you know, it's a little out of focus. It's a little soft. It's a little more yellow than that. You can come here and I'm a distant. The dog and this gentleman, uh, I love them so much. Makes me very happy in my heart. We will upload um, uh, later. I What will we do about this on the YouTubes? Mm. I'm going to get a little more pyro so orange into there. The truth is, I think that once we go uh, af, uh, offline, um, it will fix itself. Really? Like it will just be there? Uh, 
Yeah. That would be very strange. Coming forward, adding little bits of stronger shadow and color to the ground. These are just those first soft conversations around color and come in and get some red into it. Little soft conversations around the color. Coming forward. It's nice if you do get some paper that's dry, because you can allow some dry brushing to happen. With watercolor, I'm wiggling my brush back and forth. You can see it takes very little pigment to do a lot on my paper, right? Mm. That's where you're at right now. That just made some. This comes out. It's like a, it's like Mary a young blood can't watch Facebook. No. <sighs> Thinning. Yeah. So it seems that we're just going to have a fun chat on YouTube for right now. And here's my Can bet. they hear us though? Um, I don't well, think they can hear us. So I think that I think I think we need our team to come let them know what's going on. Yeah, I think there's all there's a YouTube wide problem because everyone was come saying that other YouTube channels are not able okay. to cast. So but what I think's happening is it's showing an excellent excellent connection on my end. So I believe that YouTube is receiving the the stream and just not showing it to anybody. It, well, it can't. I think that something on their end is broken. So, but I, I think mean, that it's, and that, that's I mean, fair. It's a, Stuff on my house is broken all the time. And they have a very big. I don't, I don't mean house. to like throw it down, but Mark Zuckerberg clearly like brought it on Facebook saying no connectivity is happening. <laughs> <laughs> as I start, Ooh. as I start wars between. <laughs> Between the platforms, you can soften any lines or spaces that you want by See, coming back through and reactivating well, with water. Some people are saying that YouTube is working. Is so, it working now? Maybe. Maybe. Let's see how it comes out. Let's find out. Let's find out. We're watercoloring. You know, the thing about watercoloring is you literally go with the flow. And Amy's on YouTube. She's got a full, she, hers is still working. Go oh, figure how strange, how strange, how strange. So. There we go. All right. Now this is, as it's starting to dry, you get a little more um, control over some elements of the paint. It won't blend as far. So I can come in and maybe speak to a little tree here and then come back and start to speak to another, a little bit of a tree here. Let the trees, let the trees talk to you as you need to. Don't go too far into it because you'll yep. want to like balance these out. I'm going to get some heavy brown. You can see I'm getting that this is warm sepia and I'm bringing it out quite heavy and I'll come through where this is still yellow, wiggling it up and down. Let it really, and I suggest you tap close to the ground. You can see it and I'm going to blend this in so there's a bit of shadow. Just a smidge of this will go forward. The brown will blend into the yellow, which is going to be super stunning. We have a, it's been like really interesting how everyone's here. going from platform to platform. Trying to like figure out like what platform is not blowing it for you guys tonight, right? Platform is not letting you down. Don't let the platforms let you down. We have such a loving and supporting audience. I, They're helping each other. Like, go here. Go I couldn't do it without them. I could not. Wouldn't. <laughs> would not even consider trying. I really like this little <laughs> moment happening right here, and I am not going to fight it. So sometimes when you're painting, especially with watercolor, little crazy moments will happen because an area will still be somewhat damp or an area will be dry that you didn't expect, and you'll get it. You'll get something super free and expressive don't resist the free and expressive now if you're perfectionist this moment could be a little bit unnerving but i promise you if you're perfectionist watercolor is actually super up your alley because there are really hardcore principles around it and science so once you get all those down even the out of control moments will feel super under I'm going to get a little bit more of my Ozo yellow. You could use, if all you have is your lemon yellow, your pad lemon, you could use that and that would be okay. I just like the kind of 
Nickel Azo has a Australian Sienna, if you know the company Matisse kind of feel to it, which is one of my very favorite colors. Mm. Well, just anywhere. Try not to take out all the white that you have or the light values that you have too. Lane can see us. Hi, Lane. Hi, Lane. Hi, Carrie. Bring in some of Hi, these Jasmine. leaves back and you can take them down and see where the papers kind of dry. I'll leave some of that. I won't bite that the whole way. Maybe bring some uh, kind of thoughtfulness up here. Wiggling my brush around. And I haven't even gotten the sponges into it. I haven't even shown you the coolest of the cool. I know. Everyone's, lots yeah. of folks have moved over to Facebook. So I'm watching both oh. chats. John has got it. I'm back into the vermilion and I might, I'll, I'll mix it into this. This had a little bit of my hunter's green and this has a little bit of my Nicolazzo. And so when you mix those together, they start to make some transitional oranges and reds that, Feels like, well, have you guys ever noticed that in fall leaves, it, it's almost like they are made of watercolor, like the way their leaves sort of blend into each other, even on the tree? It's exciting in my mind. Hmm. It's a little too dark. If ever you get something you don't want, you just kind of come back with a brush that's had the water sucked out of it, and you pull it up, and you're like, oh, yeah, totally under control. Again, if you like control, you do have it. It will be okay. You really will. Uh, bring some little bits of thought and color through here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take some forward. I don't want to interfere with that though. That moment, a lot of watercolor is recognizing your moment and then not messing with it. Just, <laughs> it just really is. Thank you to Amy. She's doing a really good job of trying to help everybody out here. Thank you so much. And I'm totally with Carrie, who loves Nico Azo Yellow and Conacridone Gold. Oh, I so also, awesome. I, also I like, have, I think this palette might have Conacridone Gold. If not, I have it in the tube somewhere around. Is it Harvest Yellow? Is the one that I like? Mm -hmm. the Harvest Yellow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's actually, that's the, the one I was telling you that Sea Lemon wears. Mm. <laughs> I was like noticing today. I was like. It, She's like color coordinated her channel. And then I think to myself, do I want to color coordinate my channel? Remember I painted the interior of my truck that color? Yes. It looked really pretty. Bring that forward. Playing with those yellows as always. Kind of nice. And let's come back into our brown back here. Now we can always come back with darker, darker, darker values. We can mix some of our ultramarine into our sepia and get some tremendous grays and bring this one a little bit back because this is a little bit more in showing more of what's behind the trees on the tree row. I actually <gasps> personally like it is. painting tree rows better in I, watercolor. I see it working on YouTube again. Okay. YouTube Studio just popped back in, just Good. as I thought it would. Just ding. And it <laughs> says that we've been broadcasting for exactly as long as we have been. Go figure. It's YouTube magic. I'm going to get my ultramarine into this. In this over here. And you're going to see right away. Look at this great color it makes. So watercolors, for the most part, are oh, are transparent though they do rate in you will find the tubes of paint will tell you if a color is opaque or if it's transparent it means a slightly different thing than what you would expect if you've been painting acrylic if you've been painting oils they mean a it is definitely in the family of concept but it's a little bit different it's like that weird cousin right I, and i say this as the weird cousin in my family so no shade <laughs> Because I am the weird one in my family. But when it, they're all transparent, but the opaque ones are, are more staining and um, they'll cover other colors easier. Uh, they'll glaze easier. And the very transparent ones might not go over a dark color well or might not lift. So that's what it means. It's not the same as like if you're painting a really pigmented paint in a binder. It's like heavy like an oil or acrylic. Where when they mean opaque, they mean paints it out. Man. What? It's funny. We have like, uh, we probably have like the best 
like network of people out there because it's do. like Suzanne's in the Netherlands and she's like, nope, no YouTube here. And uh, Anne is in Nova Scotia and she's like, yep, nope, no, no YouTube for here, eh? <laughs> You are going to get us in trouble, sir. Maybe just a little bit. I think but you might. I think I, you might. I have a Canadian daughter. So. Somehow that excuses it. It somehow gives me a little bit of a pass. I have a beard. I, I, I know. Yeah, but it's not for. Well, honestly, I guess if we had a hockey team. Don't down thumb me. It's a, we're Canucks. Probably. Yeah. It's the sweatshirt I got. I really liked it. We lived in Vancouver. It was the thing. I'm not saying we got fully kicked into hockey season, but how could you not be swept up in it a little bit? Because the crowd just takes you with them. There's nowhere else to go. It's everywhere. It's in the alleys between the houses. It's in the streets. It's everywhere. So even if you weren't a hockey person before, you're going to have some hockey bef- like during that time. So it was definitely educational. You're going you're gonna to leave Canada feeling something about hockey. bears, hockey, and Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to have a feeling. Tim Bits. Tim Bits. <laughs> you can get out of any kind of trouble. You show up with Tim Bits. You really can. So you can see how at this stage of the painting, right, we do have hard edges because some of the paper is starting to dry. But where little wet areas are touching, what do they do? They soften. They they diffuse into each other. They become that out of focus space that makes watercolor so wonderful. Now, moving into this space, I'm going to get some tree up. And we'll get some tree up. Get some tree. Some tree up. It maybe goes in like this. And the reason I'm putting in some tree and thinking about this particular tree in the way that I am is because there's a big rush of the red coming through. And I want to make sure. And I'm not going to paint all the front. I'm going to leave some of this a bit white. Yeah, I am. I know. Craziness. And I might come in and get a little of my blue. I'm on the inside of where the yellow is. It's like I a feel hollow. crazy. This is, this is my ultramarine blue. The nickel azo and the ultramarine, and even the nickel azo and our yellow in the set, the Senele set, um, they tend to uh, go a green gold, which is really nice. I don't really always like it in acrylics, but I do always like it in watercolors, so go figure. Hmm. I'm going to bring a little branch out here. We'll start to speak to it. We'll start to speak to that. Do it. I'm going to come back into that little orange and we'll say, oh, hey, no, let's. Ron saying that YouTube is down on the entire East Coast. That's what it is. It's our East Coast. We've lost mm-hmm. our East Coast fam. I like to lose my East Coast fam. We're on the East Coast. Now, are they going to correct their algorithm to fix their mistake? No. We don't not. know until tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I don't trust them. We have very, but you know what? Pulling this red forward, creating a glazing layer. Glazing is where the paint is dry underneath, and I'm painting another color over it. Because, yes, babe? Because we're dual-wielding Jedi, mm-hmm. we also got our Facebook skills going. We are working very hard uh, to make sure that you guys have access to your art lessons. Um. Just where you have, and I, and I want to say, uh, I just appreciate everybody so much. Just that you guys always, you know, you face the tech challenges that we've got and you and you hang in with us and you make it super doable. Do you see how we're wiggling this warm sepia on the tree here? I do. We've got, we went with an Ozzo and then we added a little ultramarine blue and we kind of created a little a moment there. Mm-hmm. We'll define that moment a little bit. We just needed that tree in and we're going to need its friend in a bit. A, a bit. bit of its friend? A bit of its friend. Who will be a little bit taller in the surface. I'm going to come with maybe a stronger kind of. It doesn't need to be completely thought out. It's going to be a little bit taller in the surface coming forward. Now we get a little. Over. Burnt. 
and kind of kind of pulls through here because this one is closest to us, right? We just want to make sure that it's taller because what's the perspective that trees get from this one? We're just playing with that. The reason it's kind of goosey goosey mm. is and I might add some gray between these two, but not touch them. When I want to paint a little color in and I don't want it to always bleed, I I'll come in and just sort of paint in the negative space not into where I have wet space and that often very much works and because everything is so expressive and free-flowing you can do that now what I have here is I have some alizarin crimson a wonderful color and um, we're going to use this as the basis for the diffused part of our red leaves I'm bringing this through here. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. I love that color in this space. And I have a glass palette here. By the way, all this color is good for tomorrow mm -hmm. and will be used in some other project that I'm doing. Um, the colors on your watercolor, unlike the colors in your other paint palettes, they don't dry and then become not useful. They are always activatable. What's up, babe? Don't orphan any of your paint. Because there's always tomorrow. Oh my God. I, you know, I don't think I could be as joyful of a person if I didn't have my husband in my life. I'm going to tap some little individual leaves. I don't. I don't think I would be as hopeful or as positive. He definitely makes it much more doable for me in every conceivable way. When I come over here, I'm going to get a little of my docks purple. And I may come in and get a little of my vermilion into it. It's kind of crazy, but it works. And we're going to add just some beginnings of this gorgeous, insane purple that's going on in the blended background. You love it? I love it. You can even get into your uh, phthalo blue here and put it in a bit. Ultramarine blue, it'll all work. Ultramarine will be a little cooler and and here's what it's going to continue to soften. It's going to continue to relax. It's going to continue to do relax, Freddie. It will. To all the folks in the house doing the beach ball wave. Hello. Hello. They all have the spinning beach balls. Oh, I'm so sorry you have a spinning beach ball. It will probably be processed and worked out and watchable later. What's funny is they'll they'll come back later and rewatch this and see the spot the pot here where they were chatting about the spinning beach ball and go, oh, that was that spot. I, I hope I, I hope they come I, back. <laughs> and they I couldn't hear you because it wasn't working for me. I hope so. They're pretty cool. They tend to come back. I hope so. They see their lesson. These cats come back. The very next day, the cats come back. They couldn't stay away. But I'm gonna add a little bit of a tree balancing thing here. So my goodness, that's the basic first row. Okay. It, what happens between here and this row, and then what we get to do in the ground, and then when the paper is dry, we come in and we add sharp lined, very crisp bits. And it is the balance of those things that make everything totally work. Now, this side is interesting because guess what? And it's a good lesson on lighting. You haven't painted it yet. The light comes from this side, from the left side. If it's on the, in your row of trees, if you have a distinctive lighting on the right side, on the left side of these inside trees, better have it on the other one. It's same, same. Light doesn't bend unless there's a mirror to bend it. We have a really good production team with like a million dollar skylight that hangs over the, lo the walkway as you're able sure, to Sure, if that is your situation, Just saying, sure. You know. If that is your moment, if that's your situation. But for the rest of us, we got to paint like with the sun. Yes. Yes. So up the other side, same, same. A little bit same, same. Maybe a little more green. What about a second a little tree friend right. that he's got there? And how sometimes they sort of separate. Oh, 
overthought about him. So you're just putting the darker light on the shadowy side now? Yeah, I'm just getting the darker light on the little shadowy side, and I'm going to... What will also happen is that they'll have to be little shadows coming from these trees. A little of my blue from here. Let it diffuse in. It's shadow. Ultramarine blue, my friends. My friend. It's going to lighten as it goes. But if you're at all worried, you just come back. Your little brush. Not interesting. Well, Amy is celebrating a, I don't know if it's a, kind of like a birthday. Yes? Yeah. So she's, a, a, first of all, she's like, shout out to the amazing Cinnamon Cooney and to Thank all the you. mods. And she said, hello to me to you as well. So she said, celebrating 12 years from the time I received a kidney from my sister Peggy. That is a huge celebration. That's, that's, like that's a, a big deal. Yeah, I'm not sure like what you call that, but that's a celebration day. That is a gift of life day. And that's, I'll tell you what, that's no small deal. That's just, that's heroic. There's, that's heroic all the way around. Uh, I'm going to get a little of my uh, vermilion again into my nickel azo and add some of those little pretty orange brown moments. I'm going to thank Liz who thanked all of our veterans. And I'm going to say thank you to all our veterans because we want to say thank you. We appreciate it. We have veterans on our own team. Colleen. We do. We do. And this is the little veteran in your life, right? It is a little dog. Or her little dog. Not gender specific. <sighs> and little bits of leaves coming out here. When you make these little marks, you can see how I just tap the brush. It's just this is just a number, eight round, and it's just about making these little weird movements, isn't it? Little toe dancing going leap, 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 leap. Who's got leaf? You do. You can come back here and go leaf, 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 making little, little hard thought out leaves, perhaps. From somewhere. Doing their little thing. Coming here. Watercolor painting is actually my favorite. It's uh, very strange that I started out on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I definitely painted. It's just, but if you were talking about like, you know, mediums and stuff that just. To my heart. This is my friend. I, I hear, hear noises. I hear children <laughs> debating. I vigorously. I, heard, I thought debating. I heard an owl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a vigorous debate. I feel this needs a parent investigation. I'll go, I'll go check it Do out. Do you love this as it's coming through? And then again, it's just you've got to get the um, you've got to get the soft going, so that you can come in and put these crisper lines in, and then they stand out, and then you just add value, 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 and then there you go. We're gonna keep going in the. And the little trees. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be super playful. I'm gonna get kind of wild. Now if you don't have this color, you can take your thalo blue and thalo green and make it. This is my other favorite uh, color. It is thalo turquoise. Uh, the combination of thalo turquoise and the azo is just unsurpassed. But the combination of this turquoise in this painting, you're gonna you're gonna be like what? And I'm like I know. I'm gonna be like I know. It's good. So good. So let's actually talk about maybe the light side of the trees with a bit of this. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A bit of this, a little bit of that. And just add it a bit. Oh, it's that coming forward. That's phthalo turquoise. He's worth it. This particular one is Daniel Smith. If you go into Michael's and you're like, what's a good watercolor? In Michael's, it's the Daniel Smith. 
Uh, I think they're starting to carry, uh, and I'm going to say this wrong, Kutsaki, also good. Yeah. That, that's online right now. Really amazing. Um, but it's it's the Daniel Smith. If they have core watercolor, also good. Uh, the gum, Grumbacher is a student grade, and so you have to decide, you know, what's there. If that is something that you want to do. I'm going to start kind of talking about my little trees with this turquoise. And this also creates a bit of what drama. And I'll be like, yeah, it's super dramatic. You know how that be. Mm-hmm. Wait a little bit. And those little upward motions, what are they? They're, they're some of the tree. If I want to come back and kind of slim that tree, I just wash that. See how I pulled that away? Yeah. And that'll be all right. Everything is just like a moment, an impression, a thought. The other thing that the turquoise is doing for me is it's allowing me to kind of inform and put in a little of my left side magic, adding my Ozo yellow into that left side magic. What do we have here? We have the blue, the blue, the blue, the blue. Coming in with a little Ozo. The Ozo is the light. The light we want to see in the world. You'll like it. You'll be glad that you did. Mm -hmm. Now you can come in and uh, and add a little just very super duper light turquoise up here. So light. I don't want to really mess with the pigment colors, and so I've got to do it light, but I do like that it might show through. And I may come in with a little bit of Ozo. In a few places, before I ever put in these drier, more thought-out leaves, that gives me spot. in with our brown and this will also mix with the turquoise which is really nice It'll do a beautiful job of mixing with the turquoise you can come in and and really play getting these dark little values here pulling them out Tree row, tree row. Like right now, this is my favorite tree row I have done on my channel. Period. Looks really good. It's just, it makes me happy. Again, what do we do? We can pull the shadows in because they cast these little shadows on top. A little bit coming in through. Yeah, there's that light. If you have to lighten anything, you just kind of bring it back through. Look at that. Crazy how that works. Come in with a little bit of orange, yellow. Perhaps two orange, two orange. See how bright that orange is? Mm. <laughs> it's two orange. Doesn't mean you can't come back through and speak to maybe a. A little sort of interesting directional light happening. And the way that I can get in there and kind of move color, that is one of the magic things about our watercolor in our world. It just, uh, just is special in every conceivable way it could be. any space between these two then this will absolutely show now we have a bit of the light rose coming in you're wondering how you would get there 
The turquoise and this vermilion against each other, they're the sauce of awesome. Which we're going to really get excited about in a minute. Pulling a little bit of that shadow down. Sometimes I like to get a little, a little strong in that space. Because why not? And of course, this is going to be taller than its predecessors. So let it be so. I'm still leaving a lot of light through here, and I think it's important to leave a lot of light. Yeah. I think that matters. Yeah? Mm hmm up a bit of this and I won't take the whole trunk up right mm -hmm. some of it into some of it because some of it is hidden you don't want to take away what is hidden that which is hidden must not be shown <laughs> See this here again the number eight just enjoying it just loving it The sepia could be burnt sienna. It's your brown. The one you want is your brown. Bring in some expressive little line. Keep white on your paper. You don't want to lose all of it. It is precious, precious space. Bring in my little brown. Where you can, you know, definitely pull the tree up into a bigger space, it will definitely help it feel like it is a closer, bigger tree. There. That's getting pretty good. Yeah. Right. Let's think about the middle of our walkway a bit. And I think, you know, to the degree that we can, I'd like to start thinking about our guy. I'm going to get my, this is Payne's Gray. I'm going to pull this out. And our our little, our gentleman and our dog are going to be kind of in that space. They are, let's place them, where shall they be? Shall he be about here? That seems That's good. Much. So he's almost a pretty fun little shape, actually. Making a little bit, a little kind of weebly wobble shape. Us there. And one leg back. That goes back a little longer. And perhaps a leg forward. That leg is shorter then if you want the leg to feel like it's forward. I'm going to add perhaps a brim or something on a hat. But just hint it at, right? Mm -hmm. Hint at a hint at more of him. Even hint at a cane. And then what we have over here, we have his dog. His dog is super cute. I'm thinking Westie or some type of terrier based on uh based on the shape. Could be. And I'm going to just sort of do a little ball. He may get fatter this time. <laughs> <laughs> you may be gaining the weight, my friends. A little foot up, foot down into my little back feet. These are, you just hint at stuff with this, mm -hmm. right? Don't paint the whole thing because if you paint the whole thing, then you got nothing. Be a little upper tail. Could be 
hen. Both just a little. But now I may I may come in with a, a kind of rinsed out brush. Okay. And I may kind of lift back up some of our dog. The reason is is that um, him having a highlight will help him feel like what he is. I may also do some to our guy. What I've done is I've come back a little bit of wet. You can see I've just lifted some. Just some. Have to feel maybe down the leg, lift a bit. Come back a little bit of our ultramarine here. Nice. A nice long and our doggies. Just just that. And comes under him. Now, and then I may go in. A little bit of a more focused shadow. Less is more. Mm. Less is more. Because honestly, if you saw like little figures walking down the aisle, you'd be like, ah! I know what that is. If I can come between his legs and lift this, I think I will. I have to excuse me here, sir. You're doing great. What I'm doing is I am lifting some of the value of the paint between his legs. So that's just a little lighter than it is. And I squeeze out the brush with my fingers, and then every time I pull the water out and come back, it wants to lift a little more color. You know how we did there? Make that adjustment, make it a little bit lighter in value. And we're going to adjust. Start to think about these different things. I'm going to get into my phthalo, turquoise. Now I've got brown and black on there, so it's going to gray out. Getting some interesting little color moments, for sure. Lighten some of it here. Come in with maybe some browns. Some browns. So fun. Be playful. Playful will go a long, long way mm -hmm. in what you're doing. Yeah. It's helpful, it's useful. To be a little bit. Yeah. And then make some little dappled light, which is these little kind of dashing marks. Dashing marks are like little dappled light. Coming back over the other side, getting back into fabulous vermilion. It's just awesome, awesome. It is awesome, awesome. Oh, just when you see it on the gray palette, you're like, oh, that fantastic. That is just what? I know. The thing with the watercolor is you just have a journey. I'll grab some of my nickel ozo yellow. Then I will pull some of this, you know, over here. I do want it over here some.
bits of that. Playful bits of that. Come here, playful bit of you. Maybe a strong kind of red here. I'll get that carmine. Let me splash a little. Let it blend into the slightly wet into wet space. Mm -hmm. And yet not blend everywhere. A little bit of that. Come back over here. Let's go back to work, shall we, sir? All right. Now, let's start to talk about the bark of the tree. Uh, the shadow of this will head out behind it. It definitely will be shading the right side more. I may even get into my purple a bit. Rebel that I am. Rebel. I am. Super rebel. Blue. Ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue. Maybe some grasses. Maybe some grasses. Mm. So we're just going to play down this row for a while, letting this have a rest, having a think. The left side's having a think. The right side is getting work. That's what you do. That's what you do. I'm going to grab some of this blue here. Maybe some turquoise gets into it. Gorgeous. We love it. Against that orange, yes, it does. Shows out like Bruno Mars. Mm. Shows out, show off. Coming down the aisle, coming down the row. We're trying to make a perfect walk. And you know what? This is even topical for 2020 because look how socially distanced he is. He's safe. He's safe. He's good. He's doing good. Actually, no, this is 2021 next fall. Feeling great. Walking outside, feeling amazing. All of the above. A little lights up and little thoughts and things. I may come back down with that because that went up too high. And can you see how I erased? Yeah. <laughs> you can erase a lot of color. Sometimes it doesn't feel like you can, but you super can. <laughs> you do anything in watercolor. Yeah, you can. It is exactly what you need it to be when you need it to be it all the time. I'm just loving that. Now, fun trick. I'm going to take a little clean water and put it on a tea sponge. Like you do. Maybe come in and tap up some of this here, this watercolor here. And make some irregular little patterns. I can even get into my red. A 
if I decide I like that texture, which I kind of do. Yeah. Don't want to do it everywhere. Some places. Because you still got to come back with some hard edged leaves. Pulling some of these hard edges out. What we do. Maybe even in the back. Some. If you don't have the sponge, it won't impact your piece in a negative way at all. It's just a nice thing. If you weren't aware of how you can use sponges, you know, in, in these types of pieces, I, I find it terrific. I grab a little of my Lizard and Crimson this time and my Nickel Azo. And make some more considered little leaves and a few spots up there. That cotton ball trick is impressing. It's it's pretty wonderful. It just it if you gotta come back with your hard edges and you get a little bit of this in, it diffuses in a way that's unexpected. Hmm. Um and it doesn't damage the paper. One one of the things that you always sort of struggle with in watercolor is making sure that your mediums or techniques don't damage the integrity of the paper, um, mostly to the point of, you know, adding any acid to it because that's what the paper is not going to be particularly for. I'm going to bring a little swag of some little red thoughtful leaves down here. Let me get into my vermilion. Get into our black now. Coming up off the top. Creeping in. So if you've really struggled with your branches in the past, you may find your watercolor branches are doing better. And that is because the watercolor will do the fine lines you need easier. Mm. Right? So if you're trying to get your fine lines in, you may find that they come in a little bit friendlier to you as the, as, as the artist, in my opinion. Interesting. You can see it's easy to break them out, break the lines. Lighter the pressure is on the toe, the more you're going to have a fine line. If the paper's wet, those lines will just dissolve into the paper. You know, these are little branches coming up from stuff that's closer to us and Bringing the little branches down places and cross each other. Hmm. They're all about the same stuff going on. Yeah. You know, they're about what's going on with that. So you just, we have the branches coming out. You can then come back with a more dark considered leaf like this here. As you do. As you do. As we all do, hopefully, tonight. Break them up. You can get into the purple too. Okay. So 
Don't take away all your lovely sponging. No. You worked very hard to sponge. Don't take that all away from yourself. You worked hard. You did what you had to do to get it, so. There is a point you can overwork watercolor for sure. Yeah. Um, generally, I find with people that really comes from finding a spot in the painting and obsessing over it for a very long time. Sure. Right? <laughs> it's not really about, um, you know, over mixing or doing any of those things or the colors are getting muddy. It's about lifting and painting and lifting and painting and lifting and painting. That's where those issues become big. Adding some purple into these. Redder. And it creates this really interesting brown fall leaf that I like a lot. Yeah. Looks like this little leaf shape. And even here, I can come in with my darker color. It's not black, it's not that, but I can add some impressions of branches that could be here in the distance they're far away they're not immediately here giving us any grief i can also believe it or not flatter some leaf oh yeah never underestimate a splattery leaf yeah it's going to go a few places but you know, it's watercolor, so mm -hmm. that's really not the worst thing that you will be dealing with, you know, in relationship to your painting. Getting a little dappling of light. It dapples, doesn't it? Yeah. Lightning crashes. Whenever I feel like I've got to come back into my Ozzy Yellow, I can just push it back in. It's another reason I really like it as a color is it, it does some wonderful things and I'm always super appreciative of that. Whoa, a little big there. Yeah. So what I do then is I'm going to come in and break it up. I get an area where I'm like, oh, you got away from me. You just break that area up visually. Soften it and watch it go away. Bright orange here. This is a uh, Senele orange, but it's just whatever bright orange you have on your palette. And again, how do I break that up? Wet the area, and what does the paint do? It travels. What does it do? It travels. Little bit of our thalo turquoise and coming up the side. So dark, getting into the purple. Getting into the purple. Getting very dark. Very dark. Play with that up and down with the brush you go, dancing up and down, wiggling, wiggling, wiggling the purple into the turquoise. Mm. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. We get to do the other side now. But the darks are on the inside. Yeah. Right? And we have to do a lot of this before we get our uh, tree totally up and going. You're sitting today. I am sitting today. You, I wouldn't really stand at the easel when doing watercolor. Um, when you do that, when you stand with your watercolor, or if it's on too steep of an angle, what happens is, is that... Uh, it runs. Mm. Great if you wanted to. Not ideal if you don't. Just working my ultramarine blue. Coming through here. Playing with a little bit of a dark shadow. Coming up the trunk some. A 
ultramarine blue. Yeah. Makes a really terrific shadow, works well over the brown, and honestly pops in this particular kind of color palette. The contrasts of this are what makes this so totally and utterly and fabulously spectacular in every way. We can always come through and just really play them off each other in a couple spots with like, what? But when it's all dry, what is it? It's just yummy. Yeah. That dark value, dark value coming up a tree. Yeah, maybe a little purple right there. Let's come back a little purple right here. If you do it somewhere, if you do it one place, it's a good idea to pop it a couple places. You can get away with almost anything in the color if you just do it a couple places. And then, it, then it works in the piece no matter what. And that's one of the fun things about it. Now I have to do a lot of the leaves and everything kind of before I get to uh, this one. I have to get kind of a lot of that going, so I'm going to get into my yellow. And start to work the brush. Doing those little dancing motions, aren't it? You load up, yeah. you load up, you load up. So that's the difference between your pans and your tubes is your tubes can be put onto these types of mixing situations. It is easy to load a lot of paint into the brush and then mix here, whereas there, you know, your colors do tend to get a little, a little dirty. Hmm. And that's why you might want to do one over the other. And come in and again a little alizarin over here into the nickel ozo yellow play with these so bloom away yeah where the bloom is that's quite lovely and then you have areas where it's dry so you get sharp edges sharp leaves soft, sharp leaves soft, soft. you can always speak to Inches over here, and I like to do them the distant ones in like that mix of the crimson and the azo because they're it's like lights hit them, they're there, you see them, we know they're there. But we're not, they're far away and they're well lit. Oh. Yeah. Yay! You guys feel beautiful, feel wonderful. How does everybody feel? I think everybody's really enjoying this. How would how would you do like a sun star when you know like lights coming through a tree? Ooh, I shall put that on the future. Mm, that's that that one. does require a little bit of uh, planning. <laughs> yeah. Um, and glazing, planning, and glazing. Planning and glazing, my friend. Planning and glazing. Splash some little distant bits of leaf and things. Oh, love him and his little dog. That little dog, dog got fatter. Mm -hmm. Dog gained weight. My dog. Things happen to you. In there and play with the color. French vermilion kind of coming into it. So French vermilion against this turquoise. Wow. Yeah, that's what we've always dreamed of. Yeah. Wiggling the brush. Having the brush. Dancing it around. 
touch and go where you see where you see kind of like obvious shapes or patterns you break them up mm. you break them up you've got a color up top make sure you've got something like it down below right. pull things through You could also do the trees with a, believe it or not, a scrunched up red. Ooh. Works pretty well. The pigment loaded into it. So, you know, the, the thing is to realize that options are pretty terrific. My lizard. I want to make sure that there's some nice space between those trees. I did this other uh, painting the other day, and we had a lot of red in it initially, and it was like a hunting scene. It was like for the 12 days of Christmas, and it, we did like some purple because like it just looked like a murder because <laughs> there was so much red. So, you know, be careful with the red is my point. You know, you need some, but uh, too much takes you too far. all that have a rest for a second really really pretty I'm, I'm enjoying this very very much This is nice to add a little bit of grass to the thing. Play with those colors. Think about them. Get into the brown. Make sure that which is close feels quite, you know, rich and dark and We have the Azo yellow through here. That's just about making sure that we've got that sense of, you know, some of these leaves mm -hmm. into the YouTube. lizard. YouTube is still not working. Yeah, I got the sense of that. It is what it is. <laughs> yep. And sometimes it's like that. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. And if we're at all, you know what? I've got a backup plan. For the next two days videos, if the live thing is kind of a, is kind of, don't worry, you've still got your snow scene, your easy, yeah. easy snow scene. So don't, don't panic. We gotcha. some dark values and maybe implying a little bit of leaves or something behind them I think mm -hmm. a little bit of my darkest color and my brown I'm up here thinking about that tree there the brown and my Payne's gray Working there right now. Coming in, in. Maybe a little more ultramarine blue. Wow. 
So where it was too wet, I kind of lost it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and kind of wiggle that branch out and let it have a rest in a dry. I'll come and work some of the upper branches while it is. And if I have to, I'll hit it with a hair dryer for the purposes of the lesson, though you should not worry about that. Now, it's great to create little branch moments that are magical and wiggly. 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 Keep your stuff wiggly. Wiggly, twiggly. Twiggle, twiggle, twiggle. Twiggle to the left, I twiggle to the right. I twiggle to the left, and I twiggle to the right. Twiggle, twiggle. over twig it's been known to happen with me i'm going to dry this not because you should dry your watercolor at any point ever but because i teach online and you okay. might want to go home <laughs> and yep she's just gonna do a quick little uh dry dry up make sure that that's all good we'll get back in there and finish this up with you guys And, yeah, YouTube is still seems to have some problems across the different platforms, but we'll figure that out. What's going on? YouTube's still having problems, but, you know. We figured it. We find a way. Yeah, it's a way. We find a way. I'm taking a little bit of my Senele orange, which is like a pyrrole, here and mix it into my Nicolazzo. We're going to definitely piece out some more. Thought about little. Little bits, maybe even come out here red, as you do, as we do. As you do. As has been done. As we want done. All right, now we've got enough uh, little break here where we could come off here and Give ourselves a bit of a twig. A bit of a branch deviation. I'm coming off of our tree. You'll see that I like to take long lines. I definitely will go for a longer line. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can branch. So, you know, be relaxed with yourself on this, on this branching thing. I'm going to just dry brush a little bit of a darker color on the tree. The brush doesn't have a lot of water in it, so that's why we call it dry brushing. Mm -hmm. All it is. Maybe get a little of my And there we go. Just sort of talk about the top of the tree just some more. Just a little bit. And I'm going to a lizard. This is my lizard. I want to get into my purple. I'll do it. I won't apologize for it. No, maybe I didn't initially, but now I do. That's okay. That's my prerogative. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Why? <laughs> Nobody Why? needs to invoke Bobby Brown on a color lesson on a on a Wednesday. It's just a lot Man, extra. Why just tap? <laughs> Especially badly. It's not like I can, you know, demonstrate how it is my prerogative in any way. Now let's uh, make sure we've got splashies on both sides. I'm going to do the double brush whack method. Yeah. That lets me offload a little more paint 
than I would normally. Also, as you can see, kind of directionally control. I just click offload it, it kind of goes a bunch of different places. If I don't want the little drops near the dog, There you go. Let's do that. Guys, look what we did. Wow. That just just comes together. Just comes together. Just comes together. And there you are, and all of a sudden you've got something. I'm going to take a little purple, maybe a little bit of my turquoise that's just sitting around here doing its own thing. Uh, I may have to go even darker. we go guys wow. in spite of technical challenges in spite of everything i got to introduce some new stuff to you we really like kicked it up on this watercolor wednesday if you thought this lesson was fun you should go back and and check this one from uh previous videos because it was just a really great one mm -hmm. um and then also we have just a basic fall leaf yeah you know um i'm so excited about this real happy with how that came out we will, uh, fingers crossed, be back. Same bad time, same bad channel next week. Uh, for the YouTube videos on Thursday and Friday, we have a backup plan. So if there's any difficulty with the lives, you will still get your content. Right? Mm -hmm. We had, we had we plan. We have a plan. We have a plan and we are ready. So hopefully you guys are too. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.